What's going on guys and welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. I got Bog in the truck. You gotta see what Bog did to his unicorn outfit, dude. Like he he went under the boat and obviously I don't clean my boat well enough because he screwed up his costume. Bog, do you wanna become a lion? No 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 Ugh. Bog's running wild. But I got my good buddy with me. Um this is Miles Murray. Miles, where can they find you on Instagram, dude? Uh Miles underscore Murray07, or you can find me on Facebook, Miles Murray. Miles is an epic guy out here on Lake Gunnersville and the TVA in general. And Miles has been really a mentor for me. He's kind of you know, the best kinds of mentors tease you. They they kind of they're like, hey bro, you should really think about this concept in fishing or this. They don't like give you spots. They don't tell you where to go. They don't tell you what to throw exactly. But they tell you about concepts and kind of patterns. And what we're gonna do is go out with Miles today. Miles, you got three rods rigged yeah, up. Yeah. What, what do you got? You're, what are you gonna teach me about, Dave? No, a chatter base. Yeah, right. I'm gonna make you change that trailer. Yeah, hey, oh, we'll yeah, talk about sure. that a little bit later. Little finesse, finesse jig. Yeah. I like that. And a trap. And a yeah. red trap. So that, that kind of comes to the concept that we're going to talk about. There's a few baits that are absolutely typical for winter fishing. And typical usually means everybody throws them and they kind of suck. Well, there's a reason they're typical. It's because they always work every winter. There's colors and there's baits, chatterbait, trap. And, and we're gonna show you some kind of like key concepts behind that and some technique aspects of those three baits. And I actually got a few more tied on, but we're gonna go through some winter fishing baits. It's cold, there was ice like on the corner edges of the water, dude, but it's sunny, beautiful. Those fish should be set up. We'll have to slow down a little bit, but Moss, we gonna have a good day? Oh, we're gonna have a great day, dude. <laughs> I, hope I so, like please. that. <laughs> so come along with us. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Support grassroots fishing. As I've told you a million times, YouTube does not like this kind of content. They don't like you seeing stuff where you can learn, where you can develop your skills on the water. They prefer whatever you want to call that other stuff. So make sure to support the things that you actually want to see. But enough about that. Let's go fishing, Miles. Let's go. Do you want to go fishing? You want to go fishing? He's ready to go, dude. Believe. Oh, he almost went out, dude. Hold my beer, watch this. It only took you twice. Miles is on the board with a bite, y'all. Dude, and she ate it, too. Yeah, when they got it like that, dude, you know you're throwing it out. Yeah, dude, she got a wrist for it down, too. <laughs> That's a big, dude. Miles is hooked up again. I'm gonna have to bust out the red trap. Hey, we really got her on the side, dude. Miles is just ripping a trap in kind of like sparse grass, and um, that red seems to be. Oh, don't tip yourself now. Ooh, that didn't sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> but not an eyes going. She looks like she's been caught before, Miles. Yeah, she might have been. Look right there. <laughs> Run through Marsh. This ain't that. There we go. Fish on, gentlemen. I think. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, thank you, Miles. Oh, yeah, bro. It's amazing. These winter fish, dude, like. They kind of don't fight a little bit. Like you hook them up and you kind of drag them in. And all right, so the the the, the shad looking trap it, it works. It didn't eat it like three miles, but I just got a little um. This is a little booyah trap in a in a shad style color. That's a nice little two pounder. That's freaking cool. So we caught a few fish and you guys kind of know the pattern. But one thing I really wanted to ask Miles about because he's got years of experience out here on these lakes. And it's kind of been like the, the hot topic when it comes to fishing. Tell me a little bit, one, about your setup, but two, most importantly, why do you think that red is so magical, dude? Like, that's been such a hot color. I think uh, my theory on it is the way that bass see color is on a red-green spectrum is what I've researched. And coming out of the deeper water in the winter, if you notice they have a film on their mouth, they're kind of bleached out, I think they can just see it better. That's my main thing. And especially with, like, if you look, the water's a little dingy, red shows up really well. But a big key to throwing a trap 
is of course your rod. A lot of people throw too heavy a rod. This is a Ducket Terex. This is, this is not in production anymore. I just had a couple left over. But that's a medium heavy cranking. And what I think that does is it kind of springboards off the grass. Whereas it won't, it won't rip your grass out from the root and you can actually get that reaction. But if I were doing this with like a heavy or a medium heavy, traditional medium heavy, I would be ripping grass out every single time, but it'll rip clean when you use a medium heavy crank and a more parabolic, something that'll actually load up. Also, what that does for you is it keeps them from shaking this trap. Treble hook baits are renowned for by shaking them, but that right there is my setup. Just a, I think I'm using a seven, seven two to one, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, and a red trap and just get half out. ounce right half ounce half yeah. ounce trap this is a this is a strike king two tap and two tap has a little deeper knock to it almost I like think, a knocker yeah, yeah almost yeah i think i think that's a big deal with it today but it, it can change from day to day man sometimes they want the little the little bb's in it right. and not that but that's my setup okay. you know what i mean right like, I didn't think it... Whoa. Whoa. And I ain't got a net. <laughs> oh. I got, I got yeah? Flipping, yeah? You don't... I broke it off. Shit. Dude! <laughs> I got him! I got... Oh, my God. I know one other person who tries to boat flip for you in five plus pound fish, and that's Lake Weidler. If you're watching this, man, like honestly, I'm not I'm not tagging you, but like I had that same feeling. Lake Weidler had, had like a five to six pound spot hooked up on Smith, and he went to boat flip, and I'm like, no! <laughs> but I you got that. Miles is like, I've caught so many like five plus pounders, I don't care, let me just boat flip it. Dude, that was a giant, Miles. And that, yeah. was, that was one of your last red traps, but yeah. still, you, this is what he actually hooked it up on. Yeah. Dude, just a red trap. It's it's a pretty standard winter and stuff. You can see we're kind of on a, a tapered contour on the sea map. There's some grass that comes up right off the bottom. Pretty shallow. And uh, just ripping that trap off of there. And actually fishing pretty quick, which is pretty cool. But that one locked Miles up, dude. Locked him up. Tuning banjo, string, <laughs> banjo strings. Tuning banjo strings. Oh dear. That's a good one. All right, Miles, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this fish yeah. for you. And I'm gonna drop the poles. You got poles down. Oh, dude. My luck. I got your luck today, bro. <laughs> Miles on the board, not on the board. So normally in these videos, like I try to do it with the chesty and explain to you guys what we're doing. But since Miles has like literally caught or hooked, nice job, Miles. Can't even close the deal, but <laughs> gotta bust his chops a little. Miles hooked a couple big ones, and he's really oh. Well, all right, so this is gonna be cool. Miles is actually gonna bring in some of the grass that we're fishing, but I'm gonna have Miles explain how he fishes the trap and kind of what he's doing with it because everybody rips a trap a little bit different. And so I wanna kind of know how Miles does it. Do you got any grass left on there? I think so. You do, you gotta look. So this kind of is what we're targeting. There's some stringy, well, that's mostly eelgrass, right? Oh, there's a little hydro yeah, in there. there's a little bit. Right there. But just that, that mixed grass, and he's ripping the trap, so we're gonna have him make a cast. Miles, so pressure on, don't yeah. backlash. Bro. I'll try not to. <laughs> so walk me through what you're doing when you're retrieving this so thing. So the first thing I do is I'll pump it to get it started and then I'll reel down and like I hit a clump right there. Okay. So you're really ripping this. You're not like there's another one. That's all you do there. You run you reel till you get to a clump when you hit a clump. And I mean it's violent. It's not like you're trying to worm it through there. What you're trying to do is they're sitting around those clumps and you're triggering a reaction so when you hit a clump and there's one behind it on the fall of that rip most of the time they're they're knocking the stew out of it so let me ask you about something else in miles because one thing i learned i was fishing the lower end of the lake and you guys saw the video i caught quite a few on a trap and actually missed a few videos whatever blah 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 mike needs to be better about catching video but like i really got in touch with how i was ripping the bait because i was actually fishing that half ounce down to like six to nine foot or so with the grass coming up like two or three foot in that case miles i was 
maybe you call it warming a trap, but yeah. I, was, I was ripping it more. You notice when Miles was doing that, he's actually almost like hitting like a baseball, mm -hmm. dude. He's really swinging on, on the rod. Is there a time when you'll use more of like the rod trip to like pop it versus actually like full on ripping it? New growth. New, new growth. growth. New growth. You'll want to cast out. Say we got some new growth right here. Slow roll it. And when it hangs up, you just kind of worm it through it. Just, and just like pop this. that rod's so that's hit. It. That's all you're doing. I mean, you're trying to like tick into every bit of grass you can. But that's with new growth. This is standing, so you really got to be violent about getting it out of there. And some of it's a little bit older too, so yeah. it's a little more. We're looking for greener stuff, but it's a little bit gooey, whether it's green or not. So you kind of gotta you gotta put some English on it to actually clear the bait. Because I think Ryan talked about it in another video. Like there's two goals when you're actually ripping a bait, whether it's a trap, whether it's a swim bait, whether it's an A rig, whatever. Number one, you're trying to get the grass off of it. You know, you're trying to clear that grass so you're not fouling your entire cast and then the other thing is to get the reaction so in order to get that gooey grass off you got to kind of put the hammer to it even if you're using a softer rod and that actually comes back to something miles talked about is using a softer rod is really key because even though you want to rip that bait out a lot of times your bite occurs right after that rip so you want your rod to be able to load up immediately after that have that parabolic kind of you can see in his rod how it has like it just kind of comes back gradually to where it was at and it wants to I guess like, so it'll catch up with that fish if it sucks it down immediately and you're not super stiff. So you actually have more, what would you call it? More backbone of the rod to give instead of being all spent. Like when you're at like a, say an 11 or a 12 o'clock. That's a pretty good example. Are you making super long casts or does it all depend on like where the, the stuff is? Uh, when I'm searching, I'm bombing it. But it like, if, if like you can visually see what you're looking at, you can cast to those targets and still like, you ain't got to cast a mile, but a big key when you're looking for them is covering as much water as you can. The best way to do that is bombing your cast. And you can see, like, I mean, he's bringing the bait in, but one yeah. thing I did notice, dude, if you watch him on this next cast, how fast he's reeling it. And I noticed that with Ryan, too. Like, this is, this is like, 49 to 50 degree water temperatures, low 50s. Like, kids move, and that's a 721 reel, right? Yeah, that's pretty so quick. Yeah. I was really surprised like how fast he's actually moving the bait now you will slow down though yeah. like if, if we go and catch a few we'll go pick it apart and that Absolutely. but that's so uh, the, cool. you know covering water I'm trying to get them to either eat it or get out of the way for the next one I like that out. dude <laughs> or snag them yeah. Miles actually said one of, the, one of the most fun things other than catching like a four to five pound bass is snagging a 20 to 25 pound carp on accident dude 80 pound 80 carp bro bangers, dude. Big. and they just they spool you <laughs> Nope. And that's the other fun part. You're always ripping it, and you never know if you're going to get bit <laughs> right after that bait settles down. Oh, God. Oh, God. I got a big. I got one, too. Okay, he's going. Oh, God, I'm on the <laughs> Dude, I got a big. <laughs> oh, my God. He just looked like a Oh, who's this going to be bigger? Dude. Dude, dude. Oh, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Mine's three-ish. Well, all right. Oh, they're 20. Hey, my, Miles, they're, I think they're on the stretch, bro. Dude, look at both of them. Got it in there. We got to get a picture of them. Oh, that was pretty good. We done hit the stretch, and she wanted to eat it, and he wanted to eat it. Dude, that's, <laughs> that's insane. Awesome. That's a double up on the trap. What? Yeah. This is what Miles was talking about, dude. Like this is insane. You get on a little pot of them, and it's game on. <laughs> For once, I caught one almost bigger than Miles. Dude. Let's get these released out real quick, dude. Peace out. Power poles are down. See if we can do it again. Once again, though, Miles is just kind of. I'm actually watching him and kind of mimicking him, and it's just kind of a reel and pop, reel and pop, same deal as before, where there's a little bit of grass, and you just kind of rip that thing off the grass. Got a little color to the water, but I was fucked. What do you say, Bog? It's the time to stop transitioning for the day and uh, head in. Well, go ahead and drop a like on this video if you enjoyed the video or if you enjoyed this guy, Mr. Bog. You guys have said some super nice stuff about him dude, down in the comments, and I know he appreciates it because he is an attention whore. But I want to thank my buddy Miles, dude. He's an awesome guy out here. If you guys are looking to come out and experience Gunnersville or the TVA and catch some bass, where can they find you once again? Uh, Instagram or Facebook. Instagram's Miles underscore Murray 07. And then on Facebook, Miles Murray or Miles Murray God Service.
see how he kind of like gets quiet that's because he's got that sage that wisdom dude but it, it was a great day that red trap like if you haven't tried it it's such a hot color and usually you know you want to be ahead of the game but frankly it works like get yourself a red trap and give it a try miles like took me to school with it when it came to bigs and it was fun to watch him work it and i hope his tips kind of helped you out i want to close out this video though miles with with something kind of that more general you know the the trap and that red was really the focus for the day but i always like asking guys who have a lot of experience out on the water winter it, and actually, the reason I'm going to ask you is because you only brought three rods. So what are what are the three baits, if you were coming out to fish pretty much any of the TVA lakes, that you'd have tied on right now? Uh, probably an A-rig, jerk bait, and a trap. I think, I think that's a good general standard. If you, if you want to... If you want to try some stuff, some, some mid-depth cranking, it'll be good. Uh, what else? Jig. A jig is always good in the wintertime for a big buy, but you really got to slow down to get that buy. So those are three picks for winter. I'm, I'm going to keep throwing the trap because I enjoy throwing it. It's a great way to cover water. But if you guys got any questions for Miles, go to his Instagram and go check him out. We're going to say, Bug, what? Are you staring at the shoreline? Like... <laughs> He's like, he's like staring longingly at the shoreline. I think he needs to go to the bathroom. But I appreciate you guys watching and supporting Real Fishing. My boy Miles, hashtag Real Fishing. He's the real deal, dude. So hit him up for a trip if you're around. But we'll see you next time back out on the water. We are actually about to make a trip to Florida. So that's going to be kind of interesting. You'll see some vids, hopefully some mondos from down there. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you don't do it for me, do it for the unicorn. And actually, let me know what bog should transition into. I'm thinking a lion might actually be fun. Kind of like Snoop Lion. Thank you guys for watching. Later. Mm -hmm.